basically anything that involves the path of action to manifest an idea in the world. All of the greatest figures in history are an expression of a warrior or an ascetic. Unfortunately, the warrior caste was almost completely destroyed in Europe by the European Civil War of 1914 to 1945, and the ascetic caste was severely depleted initially due to the poor decision of the Catholic Church not to allow priests to marry and have families, and finally when the job was finished by the communists, whose first task in any country they took over was to wipe out the intelligentsia. Many of the modern intellectuals who would have previously belonged to the ascetic caste have been subverted and used to hasten our dispossession. If you look at the attacks on manhood, it's always a two-pronged attack on these two archetypes of traditional masculinity. It's always either the warrior or the ascetic being attacked. No one attacks the merchant or laborer castes. Now, the warrior and the ascetic are interdependent on each other because neither of them alone can achieve the manifestation of the idea in the world. The warrior lives out the idea, but the ascetic creates it. One cannot enact a vision that hasn't been created, and there's little purpose in creating a vision that cannot be enacted and defended. So for this reason, modern men should aim to cultivate ele elements of both archetypes within themselves so that they're able to adopt or create a vision and be the agent of its realization in their own personal lives. In other words, the role that society used to fulfill in providing a compass and direction through culture is now placed upon the individual man. And although you may personally feel more drawn to one than the other, often the nature of, time, of the times will call upon a man to choose a path that he's not naturally inclined towards, and so the man must rise to the challenge. However, as much as it's impossible for us to rediscover the principles of modern science in one lifetime, so too is it highly unlikely that an individual will overcome the natural state of ignorance that comes with being young and lacking experience to arrive at a clear understanding of our own nature and our place in the greater scheme of things. For this reason, it's said that we stand on the shoulders of giants that have come before us who have left us with archetypal illustrations of innate nature so we can navigate the forces within us and integrate them into a state of being. The man who has the idea can't do anything with it unless he can get men of action around him to adopt the idea and incorporate it into their ethos. The warrior without an idea to follow is only a mercenary, a hired gun. A good example of a, of a blend between the two archetypes is the samurai warrior who is equally skilled in both contemplation and action. He has learned to control his mind and his body in equal measure. Uh, this concept of self-mastery is integral to both archetypes and is really at the core of this concept of traditional masculinity. Whether you master your mind or your body or both, the same virtues of self-discipline, responsibility, uh, commitment to the ideal, and steady, unwavering effort are required. Sometimes you need to embark upon a path sufficiently to see whether or not it's your best way. The reason this is essential on man's path is that in order to serve an idea rather than yourself, you need to master yourself to the point that you can, to some extent, overcome the desire of your ego that you should serve it. Ego desires are always at the center of someone acting in service to themselves. So this is important for both men and women who want to escape the clutches of modernity. Self-mastery allows you to see the difference between serving your ego and serving a higher principle. And when you've attained a high level of self-mastery, it's much harder to lie to yourself, to convince yourself that the subtle ways in which you act and service your own ego is really some higher principle. Many people fool themselves into thinking that they're acting with the right motivations because they haven't achieved the level of self-mastery to properly reflect on their own motives, which requires a patient analysis of the subconscious. It's not something we readily develop in order to see the role that their own egos are playing in dictating their agenda.